Ooh, what's up guys? Of course, ooh, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your thrill, of course, the Scarander. And today we're going up against Alexi, I don't know as Reddy Sister on Twitter. I'm gonna leave his name down below, so make sure to check this guy out if you're gonna battle him in the future. Um he actually wanted to battle against me for um, quite some time and I really wanted to battle him too, but I never really got around to it, we never really timed each other. So finally we pulled this off. I think it's like this battle is like two weeks in the making. But um, yeah, um, he wanted some mixed tier, he was not too accustomed to the smoking tier itself, but you know, he said that he was using the higher tiered stuff. So with that in mind, I decided to actually bring a few guys on my own that could kinda work. I really just wanted um, actually to have a, to try out my Arcanine and my physical Nidoking and see if they can work in this kind of environment. Uh, looking to his team here, we got... Um, oh, it's called Crawdon, Heracross, Agron, Alakazam, Fretress, and Drapion. And from the get-go, you know, Fortress seems to be the obvious lead, so I'm going to act accordingly. Uh, I myself, I'm using a specially oriented Arcanine with Snarl, actually, and Will-O-Wisp, so it's it's not by any means, um, how to put it, uh, offensively pressured. It's just for trolling and walling, and I think it does this fine. It needs to be tried out. Other than that, we've got the Hill we've got a Choice Band, a Ninjask, Assault Vest, Lapras, Assault Vest, Hitmonchan, man, I'm using Assault Vest all over the place, and Life Orb Nidoking, King, which, which I said is physical one. I know people say that it's bad because it's not the standard set, I'll say it's good because it's not the standard set. It's it's a double-edged sword, but I can see Nidoking King working very well physically if your opponent aren't seeing that one coming. Uh, but other than that, you know, I'm just going to try to fend him up properly. There are a lot of threatening folks here. I'll try to do my best. So, with this in mind, let's go. So from the start here, I'm just going to start with Arcline. Like I said, I did expect the Fortress to come out, but he's actually going to start with Drapion. And uh, from this first turn, I really felt that, you know, I do get intimidated off. I might as well go for Willow with trying to some way of shutting it down properly. Um, and I say it kind of works here because he will actually fend himself off with trying to go for a knockoff. With in combination with uh, Burn and Will O' Wisp will do, you know, not enough. Not enough. And this Drapion is pretty much whittled down from the get go for being, well, I guess it is his defensive wall and I'm pretty much hitting it defensively or specially oriented, which I probably he didn't expect there. And he's gonna go for Toxic Spikes even though I have the Nidoking. King. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's okay, it's okay. I do take out this Drapion. He probably thinks that you know he has since it is burned after all, it has no real way of coming around. So he's gonna hard switch his Crawdont, and um, Crawdont is a threat to my team. It really is. But at the same time, I was thinking I have two Pokémon with Water Absorb. I can only hope that he goes for at least once an Aqua Jet or anything like that. So I do risk the poison here coming in, but at the same time, I knew. It was the right way to do. Had he gone for a knockoff here, you know, that would have been an excellent play and I would have hated myself. But he doesn't do this, at least not yet. And um, he's gonna go to his Agron this time, trying to tank this thing out, but there is no tanking in a Specs Volt Switch. And look at this. Wow, that hurts a lot. And I had no reason to go to anything else but the Nidoking King to Dallas. Because a new Nidoking King can kind of fend off almost everything in his team besides uh, his Crawdon, which is definitely a major threat to my team. So anyway, he's gonna Mega Volt, and I'm feeling the pressure, but I do outspeed and I go for Fire Punch. I do back Earthquake, but at the same time, Earthquake gives me residual damage of Life Orb because of uh, it's not affected by Shear Force, so I couldn't really do that. And Alakazam is gonna come in, and um, I basically had to fire something off. Uh, so I'm going to decide to go into Apollo or hit the Hitmonchan and basically I was really hoping that you know he would go on for a move that I might be able to survive but after one call mine we have issues because I should be able to take one of those hits but he will actually score a crit here and that will of course annihilate Apollo so at this point I only had one option left and that was actually to go to Jade and Jade Ninjask is my only option actually. So I knew I had to go for a U-turn, bring it down to Sash, sack something again and then go for another U-turn. But he is actually not sashed. No. He's life-holed. Yeah. 
<laughs> so that kind of worked. Uh, Ninja's definitely coming through and actually opened this game wide open for Nidoking King because now we only got, like I said, there the Crodon. He'll actually go to his Toxtrick, which I did not expect to Fretress. And he's just gonna go for, of course, um, a Protect and see what I'm gonna do. But you know, I'm not gonna you know, pull any punches. There is just fire orbs or fire punches going at it and um, he actually had a barrier that re makes re more resistance of um, um, what's it called? of a fire move so not bad not bad I like that but um, really he should definitely have gone to his Crawlund at this point because uh, Crawlund might have been the only like real respond and um, I'm basically just annihilating this for address and of course he got some spikes going but um, this late in the game it will hardly matter too much so anyway here is of course the Crawdaunt and I am definitely forced to switch out and this time I decided to go to Lapras because I really wanted to showcase Lapras and it's gonna go yet again for another water move and um, yeah I'm feeling it I'm feeling it so anyway I have a freeze try and uh, I was pretty much back on this try actually going to hit him hard enough to take him out but that knockoff hurts so badly. Um, there is no way I can take another one, and my freeze try is not enough. So I'm just gonna go for Ice Shock, do some last residual damage on this Pokemon before going down. And um, he's only two Pokemon left here: is the Crawdon and Heracross. And um, I felt real safe here because I still had a Healer Lisk, and hopefully Healer Lisk can do something. Um, so I'm just gonna decide to go for a Hyper Voice because. Even if I go for a Volt Switch, I still feel that <clears throat> I really want to give this Hero Cross an honest chance to do something before I'm going down. So, um, yeah, Hero Cross is the last in, and um, I was really hoping that a Hyper Voice might be able to take it out. It would have been a splendid display, really, but no, Hero Cross is very specially defensive, and there is no way I'm gonna. <laughs> he's going to go down. They're gonna pick me up here with the Hero Mega Horn. But I still have the Ninjask, and there is no way he's going to survive an air lace. So this is GG. So thank you, thank you so much, Alexi. Um, definitely, definitely a fun battle. Very straightforward here for the both of us, to be honest. And uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I got a lot of momentum from the get go, and. Um, yeah, it basically, it turned out to be a very, very fast-paced battle, but I, like I said, I had a lot of fun, and uh, I hope we can battle soon again. So, yeah, guys, um, like I said, it was a very fast-paced battle, and uh, I got a lot of momentum from the weird sets I'm, I was using there, and uh, Nidokin being physical and all might actually eradicate his team more than, you know, I really wanted to, to be honest, and um, I don't think my opponent here is a bad player whatsoever, I just think that he's not too accustomed to the sets I was using and as a direct result to that I got a lot of damage on the Pokemon that weren't supposed to take a lot of damage so I'm sure if I would use more standard sets that I probably would have struggled to be honest I I'm actually very honest about that because like I said guys um, I use you know the unconventional sets to get some kind of momentum because I can't play standard I'd be beat to hell in standard, so I had to do something like this, and this time it really worked in my favor, uh, and very early on, obviously. Um, so yeah, Red Sister, you know, like I said, we definitely need a rematch in um, a more prospected battle where you actually can shine with what you actually know about the standard sets, and hopefully I can see if I can work around that, if, and if not... Uh, anyway guys, you know, I want to thank you as always for watching, of course, remember to leave a like if you did that, and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, and remember, the sky is the limit, so have a good day guys, and take care, alright, bye.